Okay, so yesterday I put out a video uh, basically saying I don't believe the Captain Marvel empty theater controversy, right? I don't believe it. And I told you guys exactly why I don't believe it. 14 years working in the industry, never seen anything like it, never had a, a, a whiff of impropriety. And, and, and the fact that it would happen now is so out of the blue, so out of the question that if it were to take place, if it legitimately were to take place, it would be so widespread that you'd be hearing about this from more than ultimately one or two anonymous sources. So many people would be talking about this, that it would be undeniable because people would start posting pictures. Like they say all this money. But there's no people. Theater employees would come out and say, yeah, no, we're not getting any of the people in here. I don't know what's going on. It would not. It would be a thing. It would be a big thing. People would be talking about it. There'd be no denying it. Disney couldn't walk away from it. They'd have to address it. Enough people would then be talking. But one or two anonymous sources is not enough to convince me of, of anything wrong happening. Uh, not even enough to convince Andre from Midnight's Edge about it, even though he did kind of entertain the theory. And people out there were reminding me in the comment section that the stock price is, in fact, uh, the key issue here. That Disney closing the deal with Fox, it, they don't want to drop the stock price. Because if you recall, and I will, and again, I will bring this up as a fact, when Solo failed to perform, Disney stock did drop. That is true. They, so maybe they didn't want that to happen again right before the end of this merger, right before the end of this thing. And, and that would be a, a thing. Eh, probably not. Because here's the thing is the deal was already approved by the shareholders. The deal was already approved by people at Disney and people at Fox. All it was doing leading up until today was just going through the different territories, getting the I's dotted and the T's crossed. That's it. It was already approved. It wouldn't have had any other impact in the way that you're thinking. That part was already done. Wouldn't have impacted the Fox deal whatsoever. It's an interesting theory. It's an interesting tinfoil theory. But at the end of the day, there's simply no evidence to support it in any particular fashion. Now, I was reading through the comments and a lot of people were telling me that they were going to see the movie and that they were going that they went to go see it and that it was kind of empty or maybe two thirds full or half full in some situations. Here's the counter to that. And again, pay attention. Forty three hundred and ten cinemas screens make that perfectly clear. Forty three hundred and ten screens are currently playing Captain Marvel. That number didn't increase from week one to week two. No new screens were added. So it's the same amount of screens playing the movie on average five showings a day per screen. So by just doing the general math, we're looking at around 21 to 22,000 screens, individual showings of the movie every single day. Sorry, I meant showings, not screens, but individual showings of the movie every single day. Now, that is a lot of showings. And, and if you look at just uh, the average, could be around 100 seats per auditorium, but it varies from auditorium to auditorium. So even then, what would be 100 times 22,000? You know, 2.2 million people. Just running on that number would be what would what we would have going potentially to the theater every single day. Maybe it happened. But at the same time, this movie is 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 lacking one thing that a lot of other films have that fill up those auditoriums. And that's scarcity. That's actually the one thing Captain Marvel doesn't have in any shape or form is scarcity. There's none of it. It's got it's playing in more cinemas. Then Batman v Superman did in its opening weekend three years ago, more cinemas, and it still made less money in its opening weekend. Remember, 180 million for Batman v Superman opening weekend, 2016, 4,200 and some odd change uh, screens, 4,310 screens for this less money. Again, looking at the basic math. If it made less money than a movie that was playing on a similar amount of screens or fewer screens, only by about a hundred, 
three years ago, that would mean that people weren't always going to be packing every single auditorium full. When there is a lack of scarcity, people don't feel the need to jump on the tickets or to jump on the showings that they feel is going to be the most packed. They actually can spread it out and they do spread it out. We've seen this. How many people said, I'm going to wait for the week to go see it? Or how many people said, eh, I'll catch an earlier show. And when you go to a megaplex, like a 16 screen megaplex and Captain Marvel is playing in half of those auditoriums and it's running five screens a day or five showings a day per screen, that's 40 showings just on that example alone. That's it. People even it out. They even it out or they'll spread it out across different showings. So again, just looking at the general concept of everything about this controversy, nothing adds up mathematically, nothing adds up uh, through any kind of logic or reasoning. And if you sit there and you go, Matt, you kind of come across as condescending right now. Yes, it's because I'm legitimately telling you based upon my experience of working in this industry for roughly shit, half my life in some instances. By the time I left, it was around half my damn life i have been spending working in theaters. I know this industry. I'm telling you, this is not a reality, but there's a way to test it. Now, I did say yesterday in my video that if you, the, the best way would be for these anonymous employees, these anonymous managers that are apparently telling Bounding in the comics, all of this information would be to then provide receipts. As I mentioned yesterday, want to reiterate the fact, hard copies, hard copies of the nightly report is kept on site at the theater for usually around two years for auditing purposes. Corporate cinemas, man, they audit all the damn time. They have an they have a, an auditor that goes around to different theaters all the time, spends a few days at a theater, and it audits it, counts tickets, looks at inventory, everything. They do this frequently. Ask any employee of Regal, AMC, Cinemark, whatever else is out there, I don't know. And they'll tell you that corporate is a mofo because the numbers matter. The inventory matters. The tickets matter. The employees have to print out the ticket stubs that you give them that they tear. You know what they do with those? They don't throw them away. They count them and then they staple them together, usually in packets of 10. And then they write them down at the end of the day and they keep them in case an auditor comes by that needs to, to, needs to look at that information. Because that's, again, what these companies do to keep themselves on the straight and narrow. That's how it works. So if, if this, this theory is to be believed, this one cinema somehow lost 570 seats, provide the, the receipts for it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it flat out, full stop. They're not going to do it. I know they're not going to do it because they would, somebody would have already asked them for it and they already would come and say, oh, well, I don't want to give away the, the identifying information. I don't want to risk my job. Cool. You can remove the information. That would be identifying to your theater. Keep it on the company letterhead, which is going to be printed out on the Excels. Because keep in mind, they pay company they they pay for the Excel or the program that they use in order to you know do the reports. So you can put company logo, company letterhead, company something to identify which theater chain it is, and we can see which tickets sold, which tickets weren't, which theaters were empty, which theaters weren't. Not that hard to do. Not at all. But they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. So then let's put this to a theory. Let's put this to a test. All right. Here's how we prove. One way or another, Captain Marvel. Are they inflating it? Autumn, are, are they inflating it artificially? Well, the Disney deal is done as of today. The Disney Fox deal is done as of today. All right. Tomorrow, Disney moves into the 21st century lot. Disney takes over 4,000 people are going to lose their jobs over the course of the next couple of weeks, which is what's been predicted, which is unfortunate. And that's where we find ourselves. Cool. Well, that part's not cool. However, if Disney is artificially inflating the numbers, then that would mean that they would have no reason to do it this weekend. They would have absolutely positively no reason to do it this weekend. So if they're buying it up, and, and they're artificially inflating the numbers, then that means that Captain Marvel this weekend will plummet. It made 69.3 million its last weekend, made 5.1 million yesterday, right? According to the box office numbers, it will plummet down 
let's say under 15 million. Right. Let's say under 15 million. Now, you know, we'll, we'll give it we'll give it a we'll give it a grazing point. We'll, we'll give it a graze. We'll give it an estimate here. OK, let's say between about 23 and 15 million. It will make that much. It will drop by two thirds. Let's say that because that's what I'm hearing anyway from some people that like it's m- hundreds of millions that Disney has spent to artificially inflate this. OK, fine. Fine. Let's say that it drops down between 23 million and 15 million this weekend. That would say that there is such a massive drop off. No one would be able to ignore the numbers. It would start a controversy. It'd start a conversation with the movie press. What the hell happened? Well, we'll know at that point. We'll know at that point what the hell happened. So that's where it's at. If that happens, if it has a tremendous drop, 65% from last weekend down, right? 60 to, you know, let's say 50 to 55, 65% from last weekend down down to the 15 to $23 million range. Although my math is probably no way accurate on that front, but we're just talking about that. Then cool. Then we'll know Captain Marvel was being artificially uh, inflated by outside sources in order to boost up the price. And if that happens, I will come out and say, I was wrong. I will admit I was wrong, that there is something rotten in Denmark and there needs to be an investigation into this. And the FTC would very much be called because that is something that very much needs to be investigated then. That's my proposal. That's my proposal. Because if the the people who are making the claims are not providing the the receipts from the company, which they have access to if they are managerial staff or not even that, if you're just a standard door person or standard floor person, uh, hell, you could go and you could get the most of that shit's pretty open. Everyone has access to it if you know what you're looking for. All right. And everyone there guaranteed knows what they're looking for, especially if they're a, a staff supervisor that does inventory on the night shift. They know what they're looking for. Prove it or we wait for this weekend to see what happens. If it has that drop, that mag, that magnificent of a drop between I can come out and admit I was wrong hundred percent, but that's my proposal. The question is, what do you guys think? Let me know.